You're rather narcissistic about promoting yourself, but why do you refuse to address the racism by the Chinese towards other minorities? It's not wrong to point out denial of rentals or plain slurring of apu nene, is it? Is your ignorance of these issues consistent with socialism? Hello, good evening. Welcome back to the brutal, cruel, and dystopian capitalist dictatorship of Kuala Lumpur. Today is going to be another run and talk video. Yes, because I always like to do a little bit of jogging before I do my weights. And today we're going to talk to you about the way to defeat racism in Malaysia. Are you ready? Let's go! And I know, liberals, that this is a very, very difficult idea to digest for you, but physical exercise does not necessarily make you a fascist. Yes. A man who calls himself socialist must be ready to die for socialism. He must be ready to die for the ideas of Marx, Lenin and Mao. Yes. For anyone who does not perform physical exercise is a lazy, worthless degenerate. A man who calls himself a socialist must be willing to shed his blood for the ideals of socialism. Yes, that is correct. A man who calls himself a socialist must be ready to fight the reactionaries until the last day of socialism. A man who calls himself a socialist must be ready to fight the forces of reaction with every ounce of strength in his body. A man who calls himself a socialist must be ready to fight the reactionaries in the landing grounds, on the beaches, in the air, in the sea, in the ocean, and in the Akirat, if necessary. He must never surrender, and I shall never surrender until I finished my 40 minutes of running. So a very charming Malaysian Indian gentleman came screeching on my Twitter page recently, and basically he was very angrily demanding that I address the racism of the Chinese Malaysian community towards Indians. And this guy has been harassing my Twitter profile for a while with all sorts of nasty names. Because apparently, according to this Dinesh Nair fellow, I'm apparently too soft on the Chinese Malaysians who are apparently very racist against the Indian community. Now this is ironic because on one hand you have this guy who's saying that I'm biased in favor of the Chinese Malaysians. So apparently I refuse to call out racism by the Chinese Malaysians. And on the other, you have Asian American diaspora ultras and Chinese ultras in Malaysia who call me a race traitor. And uh, some even compare me to a Japanese collaborator. Because no, I'm not particularly fussed about whether vernacular schools survive the 21st century. And no, I'm not particularly interested in learning Mandarin. I have a lot more interesting th things to do in my life. And yet, it's like, you know, to some people, I am basically biased to the Chinese community. And to others, I am a race traitor. And uh, to some, I'm apparently a British stooge. And to others, I am commie scum. So make up your minds, my enemies, my dear esteemed opposition. Please make up your minds and actually be consistent in your, um, you know, your, your critique of me. Yes. But anyway, let's humor this fellow a bit by going through our Twitter discourse. And then you can decide whether I was the fair-minded one or whether he was the fair-minded one. So it all started when I said, public service announcement. 
If you're supporting Palestinians but treating Rohingya people like garbage, then your support is worthless. Because quite a number of fascists in this country really, really have a double standard towards Rohingya refugees and Palestinian refugees regarding the uh, latter as superior to the former. And, well, this Dinesh Naya, who's a Malaysian Indian fellow, says, What if they treat Palestinians like shit, Rohingyans like shit, and Indians like shit by denying housing and jobs to them, comrade? So he's dog whistling. You know what he's talking about. But, uh, yeah, let's get to the next tweet. So I say, pray tell, Mr. Naya, who the they you are alluding to might be. To which Mr. Naya responds, Are you a socializing idiot who doesn't understand? Pun intended, comrade Bangsa. Okay, Bangsa is basically the place where all the Malaysian liberals hang out. It's a, this hive of scum and villainy in Kuala Lumpur. It's the place where all the pro-West Malaysia Kini liberals like to hang out. And it's uh, supposed, we, when we refer to the Bangsa bubble, we're referring to uh, people who basically use progressive language but are out of touch with the sensibilities of the working class in Malaysia. And basically, Bangsa is like the Gangnam of Malaysia, so to speak. Which is strange because I only visit Bangsa when I absolutely have to. I only go to Bangsa once every few years. So I say, judging by your track record, I know which minority race you wanted to bring up, but I was hoping you would have the balls to say it explicitly, Dinish. I do, a shit ton of times. Why do you shirk it, though? Why dance around it? Why? Judging by your track record, you're a false socialist who doesn't like it being pointed out. This is exactly how the liberals react when you bring up racism by the Chinese against others, including Malays, in Malaysia. They develop sudden amnesia and sweep it under the carpet because it disputes their worldview that only the Malays are racist. Ah, so you're just a garden variety xenophobe then. Well, I don't really need a xenophobic shithead's approval, as it is of no more consequence than that of a cockroach. You're rather narcissistic about promoting yourself, but why do you refuse to address the racism by the Chinese towards other minorities? It's not wrong to point out denial of rentals or plain slurring of apunene, is it? Is your ignorance of these issues consistent with socialism? Well, I actually did make a video calling out the problematic and odious trend of racism against Indians in this country. But no, when I did that, he said I was uh, doing a public masturbation, meaning I was just jacking myself off and trying to get followers. Now, this fellow seems to have a bee in his bonnet about the Chinese Malaysians, because time and again he's made rather sweeping statements of the Chinese Malaysians. And forgive me if this seems like just a hunch, but I get the impression he doesn't really like Chinese Malaysians very much. And uh, you see, he was expecting me to be going full boba liberal in the sense that, oh, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry on behalf of my racist reactionary Chinese community. <laughs> Oh, I'm so sorry that the Chinese community as a collective are guilty of discriminating against the Indian Malaysian community. Boo! I'm going to slap myself. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Yeah, he was actually expecting that kind of self-flagellation from me. And it doesn't even matter that I made an entire video dedicated to addressing the odious racism against Malaysian Indians in this country. Apparently, I was just jacking myself off and trying to get likes with that video. So you see, I'm damned if I do, damned if I don't. If I, if I don't say anything on Twitter about how Chinese people are racist against Indians, oh! That means I'm a fake socialist. 
I'm apparently, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm actually biased towards the Chinese community, turning an eye to their racist reactionary tendencies. And on the other hand, if I do speak up against racism, against Indians, well, I'm not sincere because I'm just a Ching Chong Chinaman, right? I definitely have an ulterior motive. Then it occurred to me that since this guy is so prejudiced, so prejudiced against Chinese Malaysians, nothing we ever do will change his mind. Because he has already decided in his mind that we are guilty until proven otherwise. So it's not my job to prove to you that the average Chinese auntie or uncle you meet on the street is not a raging rabbit racist, okay? It's not my job to prove that to you. It's your job to judge people as individuals, you know, rather than basically pigeonholing an entire race of people because of the bad behavior of some. Now, are there individual Chinese Malaysian people who are racist against Indians? Yes, that goes without saying, okay? In one of the independent schools I worked at, the academic director, apparently, according to the other teachers, was known to joke that between an Indian and a snake, who do you kill first if you meet both of them in the jungle? Yes, that is true. And my ex-girlfriend's uh, sister ended up falling in love with an Indian guy in school. But unfortunately, their auntie vetoed the potential of a relationship because apparently, according to the auntie, Indian men don't treat women well. And she did not trust an Indian man with her niece. So, yes, there are also cases of Chinese Malaysian landlords who do not rent properties to Indian tenants because they're afraid that Indian tenants have got, uh, you know, problematic uh, characteristics. For example, they have this uh, prejudice that arises from British colonial times that Indian tenants are likely to get drunk and rowdy and cause trouble for the neighbors. Yes, these things absolutely happen. But here's what I'm not gonna do, Dinesh. I am not gonna add fire. I'm not gonna add oil to the fire by saying that these are characteristics that are distinct to the Chinese Malaysian community. I mean, anybody, anybody is capable of being racist to Indians. So what, what, why is there a need to single out Chinese people? Why not talk about Malay people who are racist against Indians? Or white people who are racist against Indians? Or any other race that's racist against Indians? Why single out the Chinese? There's just no way of telling you this politely, Dinesh. But you, sir, are a racist. Yes, if you think Chinese people are more likely than other races of people to be racist against Indians, there's no gentle way to break this to you, Dinesh. But you are a racist. You should fix your own attitude first before calling others, before calling on others to fix their attitude. Remove the plank of your own prejudice out of your heart before you attempt to remove the speck of dust out of other people's hearts. You are a racist. And it's not your fault because racism is a form of false consciousness that we socialists attempt to eradicate. It is a form of false consciousness that is fostered by the ruling class in order to divide the masses and prevent class unity. But what particularly irks me is this horrendous losing strategy that Malaysian liberals time and again apply, which has been a losing strategy for decades, and that is to do two things at the same time. Simultaneously scream and scream and scream for the abolition, the abolition of race-based politics in Malaysia. That's one thing. While on the other hand, 
constantly finger pointing at entire communities of people and saying that this community is guilty. Yes, this is the losing liberal strategy that has not gotten us anywhere. Because it's still fresh in my mind, the time when those four kids in Malaysia got into Harvard, and all four of them happened to be of ethnic minority background, and there were no Malays in that cohort. And guess what those liberals were doing? Almost immediately, you had a knee-jerk reaction of Malaysian liberals screaming about, yeah, this is minority triumph against the, the, the system that is holding the minorities back. Now, no one is doubting that quotas and Bumiputra politics have indeed hurt ethnic minorities. For example, it's very infuriating when rich Malays get places in UITM because of the affirmative action policies while poor Chinese and Indians who need those places end up losing when those rich Malay kids could be going to private institutions. We know that what started out as a benign policy in order to level out the playing field, because at the very beginning, the Malays were indeed the, low, the, the poorest class under in, in post-colonial Malaya as a re result of being thrust from feudalism straight to capitalism. But it created a strata of elite bourgeois Malays who then reproduced their class privileges by taking advantage of affirmative action when they don't need to because they have the best teachers, best schools, best equipment. They have all the advantages in the world. So they're still taking advantage of affirmative action. But, but here's my problem. Those four Harvard kids that the, that the, uh, the liberals use as their tokens to show that underprivileged minorities have succeeded despite the odds and who, who say that because minorities work hard, they're not religious extremists, they're, 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 they're willing to, to, to work hard and have a good culture. This is basically model minority jack shit. I'm not saying those four kids didn't work hard, but those four kids that the liberals uphold as a revolutionary subject are hardly what you would call the underprivileged minorities. If your parents are sending you to Harvard, you are not underprivileged. Hell, those four kids are more privileged than the average Malaysian. They're, in fact, more privileged than the average Malay person in this country. But those fucking liberals just had to, you know, smugly proclaim that this is an example of why minorities succeed why minorities are doing well in this country because we're willing to work hard. And basically, by doing that, they also ended up gaslighting poor Malays who have fallen through the cracks of Bumiputra policies and have not done well under this system. So, it's not only with that uh, Danish Naya fellow, we also see liberals of all races, you know, basically rubbing it in the face of poor, struggling or working class Malays when, whenever a minority achieves success. And this is not forming class unity. This is breaking class unity and creating distrust among the masses. So my grievance, my gripe, is that liberals are addicted to losing. Yeah. They're not interested in uniting the working class and, and trying to form solidarity, but you know, by instead just focusing on policy and avoiding making racially inflammatory statements or inflammatory statements about, about religion. They, they would rather start a race war than unite the working class. That is my issue with liberals. So while we can acknowledge 
that the bourgeoisie applies race-based politics to divide the masses and reproduce their own privileges and the privileges of their cronies, like Vincent Tan, for example. You think Vincent Tan wants to end race-based politics? Instead of, you know, addressing this as like through a class analysis and seeing it as a way for the, the bourgeoisie to divide the masses, these damn liberals then have to point to the Malays as a collective and say, oh, Malays have a cultural problem. Malays as a collective are privileged. Even the Malay who is struggling to put ends, to make ends meet and put food on the table is privileged as well. It's more privileged apparently than a, than a kid from an ethnic minority background going to Harvard. That's basically like saying, uh, you know, a, uh, a, 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 a black kid from a rich family is less privileged than a white kid from a poor family. These liberals cannot for once divorce their mind off racial identity politics and just focus on class. No, they can't and they won't because they benefit from class society. And yes, we can also talk about how many frustrated working class Malays end up believing that Chinese people in this country are privileged because time and again, the bourgeoisie has basically planted the seeds in their mind that the Chinese are rich, the Chinese are drowning in money because it is true that most of the top 10 richest people in Malaysia are Chinese. But the fact of the matter is that a working class Chinese person has nothing in common with those top 10 richest people. As I've said, you don't even owe jack shit to a capitalist of your own race. Yeah, a Chinese capitalist is more likely to oppress a Chinese worker than a Malay or an Indian worker is. An Indian capitalist is more likely to oppress an Indian worker than a Chinese or Malay worker is. And yes, a Malay capitalist is more likely to oppress a Malay worker than a Chinese or Indian worker is. The capitalists want you to be race conscious not class conscious. They want you to think you owe something to them just because you have the same genetic code as they do. But they don't feel that they owe you anything. They will mercilessly exploit you while having tea at Kenny Hills or Damansara Heights with reactionaries of all different races. Yes, the capitalists divide the masses by making them race conscious rather than class conscious. And the liberals who should know better because these people are not um, poor, uneducated people. Liberals are generally upper middle class people who should know better end up constantly throwing oil into these flames of distrust and racial hatred. But I have a solution to end racism in Malaysia once and for all that will certainly make the liberals gag. You know what my solution is? Class. Yes, organizing the masses on the basis of class rather than race. Ushering in a socialist society where people do not see each other as races but as classes. And then race-based politics will naturally wither away when we don't have any capitalist ruling class dividing us. But no, we can't have that because liberals don't want that. Liberals want the, social, the Singapore model. Liberals fundamentally still want to maintain the capitalist status quo because it suits them so much. They do not want to give up their class privilege under capitalism but they don't want to be seen to be doing nothing either to improve situa the situation in this country. So they keep screaming and screaming and screaming, end race-based politics, end race-based politics, end race-based politics. But they will never call 
for a socialist society and they will never call for the Malaysians to organize on the basis of class rather than race. And you think Singapore doesn't have race-based politics? It does! It's just that we don't live in Singapore and uh, the fact of the matter is that it's a lot more subtle about its race-based politics than Malaysia is because Singapore is a lot sneakier about it because basically Singapore is trying to maintain its image as a meritocratic society that does not see race. But they absolutely do, okay? The only way that you're going to scrap race-based politics once and for all is through socialism. But that's not what liberals want. In fact, if a socialist revolution were to come through, I can predict that the liberals will be a bigger threat than the Islamists will. Yeah, the liberals will be bigger reactionaries than the Islamists will. Because they'll say, oh no, why should we give those lazy B40 people socialism? They don't deserve it. Oh, because they're already privileged. Oh. You see, so, the liberals will stand in our way. And the liberals will be the ones who wreck our movement. That's why I'm saying we cannot... We cannot let liberals infiltrate socialist movements. We, we really need to purge our movements of the liberal elements because they will always, always create animosity among the workers with their race baiting. But to conclude, yes, there is absolutely racism in this country as our post-colonial legacy that was started by the British but you are not collectively guilty for the bad behavior or the racist actions of individuals in your community. I am not guilty for racist Chinese landlords or racist Chinese people against Indians, and you as a Malay person are not collectively guilty for the racism that the reactionaries in your ethnic group carry out towards minorities in this country. You are not collectively responsible and I assume that you are innocent until proven otherwise. Because I am not a racist, I do not judge people on the basis of, a bad, of the bad behavior of a few bad apples in their, their community. I judge you as an individual first and foremost. Because I'm not a liberal. I'm a socialist. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. So you never feel the Republic Swobon Explotilla Naveki Felica Yarus the strats to get so stani vole narodos jedini mogući sovjetski sojus slav sa ote će svog naše svobo nodje drusbi narodov nadjožni oplav patija ne Such as who